What's up YouTube? Coach5515 back again with another video. So this time I'm going to tell you a story about the most scariest moment I had with uh, work being an EMT. But first of all I want to give uh, um, prayers and condolences to Salt River Fire Department and the family of Brendan Br Bessie, who lost his life in the line of duty on Friday, um, I think it was April the 9th. Um, Brendan was Brendan and his partner were on their way to a call in their med unit ambulance um, when they entered the highway east of Mesa, Arizona, on Beeline Highway 87. Uh, they entered the highway and a semi truck hit them. T-boned them and Brendan Bissy was the driver and he died at the scene. Um, Tyler Packer was his partner and he passed away, or actually he didn't pass away, he was transported to a Scottsdale hospital in critical condition. Uh, being an EMT and you know seeing that um, that traffic accident that they they showed on on the news you know it's devastating to see and you know it doesn't surprise me because I always tell friends and family that you know anything could happen in the line of duty that you know uh, that we're in being as EMT and going to work you never know when you, you're not gonna come back um, I always tell them, you know, I, I always tell them that, you know, if anything were to happen to me in the back of an ambulance, like in an accident or anything, it, it's probably not going to be a good outcome just because of how, you know, that, that ambulance is built. Um, then on top of that, you know, tell everybody that you always love them. Uh, you never know what's, what's going to happen. I always tell you know my football my basketball team is that my boys always tell them you know you never know what's going to happen um one person could be here one day the next day they they could be gone so tell them you love them um don't take them for granted um so you know as, as navos they say we're not supposed to say that but being an emt and being an ems being a first responder you, you, i always see that you know, so we see what 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 could be the outcome of all these calls that we we go on. But so so my story goes that um, we were called out to uh, Rough Rock, five miles west of Rough Rock, um, for a vehicle accident. A single vehicle accident. It was a vehicle versus animal. So. It was a grandma and her four grandchildren were traveling on the highway. They had hit a horse. Um, the accident was so bad it killed the horse. Um, it basically took off the whole midsection of the horse and blew it up. The cab of the car was was gone. It was basically from the front windshield and it was smashed backwards onto the cab. So it was sitting like this. And after it hit the horse, it went down into a ditch. Um, there's like a small bridge here and then down the culvert and there's a ditch. It was sitting like this down toward the wash. Um, it was sitting on the ledge so it wasn't really sturdy. Um, there was a Kanta police officer that showed up and a Chinle police officer that showed up on scene. Um, as well as a couple bystanders. One one of the bystanders was the father of one of my basketball players. Um, they were really helpful on scene. Um, so the only way to get to the vehicle was you couldn't just walk to the vehicle. It was it was sitting up like this, and then we had to walk down, pass through a bob wire, and then walk down into the ditch, and then like come back up around. So it was kind of like a hike. Uh, the drop was probably about 50 feet down 
and like I said, you know, every movement that, that the the car made or any, any kind of movement that was made inside the car, the car would it, it would have went down the down the ditch, down the wash. Um, so my partners and I assessed the situation. There were three of us. Um, there was no rescue available, no fire department available. They were out on training down in Phoenix. So the fire department in Kianto, which is about, say about 40 miles away, about 40 minutes out. And then from Chinle, they're about 40 minutes out also. Um, they're a volunteer fire department, so it was going to take longer. Um, helicopter wasn't available in the area because we are so far out that we could actually get the patient to the hospital and to the ER to the doctor faster than the helicopter would get there um, so we had to kind of uh, brace the vehicle against another vehicle with the tow strap so the tow strap was hooked on to the car's frame and then the tow strap was hooked on to the truck. Luckily, they were dualies, so they were a big trucks, so they were they were there to, you know, come in and help. Um, so, two of the kids got out. Three of the kids got out. They were already safe in another person's vehicle. Then one was with the officer. Um, the passenger was a older. I think he was about twelve at that time. Um, he was still sitting in the vehicle with his grandma. They didn't want him to move and you know, they didn't want to you know, chance chance the vehicle going down down further into the to the ditch. Grandma was bleeding. The passenger was okay. He looked like he was able to move and you know, the easiest thing for for him to do was go ahead and crawl out after we secured the vehicle. So he was able to crawl out out the front and then he crawled over the vehicle and then toward the back um that was the easiest way for him to get out if he went forward he would have slid down and probably went down then down the ditch um or actually the wash which was probably about another 20 foot drop um we had to hike around do the bob wire come underneath go into the wash and come back up to get to the vehicle we couldn't just come straight down over the top if we did, the vehicle would have probably plunged over the over the wash. So I was the one that was more uh, nimble, or you know, I could move out of all or out of everybody else that was there. So and I had just had surgery too to my knee, so that was kind of you know I had to put that on the back burner and you know help this lady. Um, so I crawled under the vehicle. So the, so the bumper was, was sitting like this. It was probably sitting right here. If I were to walk this way, it was sitting right here. I'd have to duck around and come around the tire. So you have to crawl underneath the tire and then back up and get back to the, to the, to the door. I'm going to open the door because it was jammed. And it was kind of, kind of uh, scary too because we still didn't know if that vehicle could still drop because it wasn't really, uh, uh, we, it wasn't really secure. Um, I, I don't know, I, I didn't trust it, but it was still, you know, it was still kind of moved. So somehow we opened it, we had to pry it open. Um, we just had to, you know, just, just do it because grandma was bleeding. Um, you know, she couldn't, she, she had trouble breathing because of how she was sitting. She was sitting kind of straight down in the bumper or the, the, um, steering wheel was sitting against her chest, chest and she was just like straight down. Um, she was able to talk and everything, so we had to try to get her on the backboard. It was tough getting the backboard in and try to we had to put her on the backboard and then slide her out. And it was tough because we're in like I said, we're in that incline and then it was hard for for anybody else to get in besides me. But we had to work with it somehow and my other partner did the same. Um there was three of us, like I said. So I had to kind of like like get her and put her on my other my other partner was kind of holding holding the backboard in, in, in an awkward in an awkward um awkward way so we had to slide her out and put her on on the backboard and slide her out so when we put her on she had her, 
her her um, chest started to to hurt and she she said she couldn't breathe. Put the oxygen um, the poke socks on her, the monitor on her finger, and she was having trouble breathing. So we had to kind of work fast to get her out. And every time we moved, and you know that vehicle, it was moving and shifting. Excuse me. And and on top of that was just me and my other partner working working together because she was it was hard to get her out. And when there's an accident, it's already hard enough to get the patient out as it is. But this one, we had to work kind of uh, up above our head and you know try to try to get her out. Um, so we finally managed to get her on the backboard after five minutes and get her out of the vehicle. And my partner was kind of like, you know, struggling because he, he had trouble. And I had to get like underneath the backboard and slide her out and then like kind of, you know, move, maneuver her down. Um, well, my partner had her, had her strapped or uh, holy, well, well, actually I kind of switched with my partner. I got her over and I was holding the backboard and he had to kind of strap her in pretty quick because she was still having trouble breathing we didn't know if she had a broken neck any other injury so we just go ahead and we just went ahead and left her on the backboard um got her out and then we had to hike her you know you know maneuver it back down the wash kind of so she was at an angle and then you know put a rope on on her we put a rope on her and then we we slid it down. Luckily, these guys they were they were cowboys and they had ropes on them. So, put her on on the um, backboard, slid her down while she was still tied up, and um, put her on the rope. So at the bottom was the officer and the three of us, and then um, the basketball player. His dad helped us out and carried her out. So, you know that was one of the scarier calls that we had I think all together we were on scene for like 45 minutes um, trying to work on her and you know trying to get the scene secured so you know does anything like that could happen you never know on, on our scene you know that that vehicle could have easily you know just slipped slid down you know crushed one of us or a few of us it, it was a pretty hard scene to work but um other than that thank you for watching um, Shout out and thank you to Shane Ballou. I purchased some stickers from him. Check out his channel on YouTube, Shane Ballou. And also I got stickers as well. So if you're interested, hit me up on the comments or let me know. These are the stickers I had made. Um thinking of getting some shirts made, see how that goes. But um Thank you for watching. Thank you for subscribing. Um, say prayers for Salt River Fire Department, um, Brendan Bessie's family, and um, Taylor Packer. I'm still uh, fighting for his life, I believe. Uh, thank you for watching. Thank you for subscribing.